When you speak against the established norm, you get pushed outside. You don't get funding anymore. Well, I think part of the problem is also that when someone defines someone as uh, one particular occupation, and for you, it's you're a very talented actor. So I'm people, an actor. you're a very yeah. talented actor, my opinion. And Thank you. so people think of you in that way and say, so there's no way he's awesome at something else, too. Yeah, well, a lot of that happened, like you said, the guy that interviewed you, interviewed you for Rolling Stone. Yeah, Eric. Eric. I invited him into my home for two days, and I walked him through all of these things, but he had an agenda at Rolling Stone. They didn't say Terrence Howard has discovered this, that, and the other. They said Terrence Howard, a very dangerous mind. So you put that kind Did of... Did they mean that in a complimentary way? I didn't read the article, so I can't tell It wasn't taken in a complimentary mm. way. So they thought you were crazy. They took it as crazy. Right. And he tells you that I had something serious, but to everyone else, I want to take you guys to something where... Um, you remember Nikola Tesla said, man, said, if mankind understood the magnificence of the numbers three, six, and nine... He would have the keys to the secrets of the universe. If you will go to the linchpins bonding. Can I bring you back to the and Rolling Stone thing, though, before because you kind of abandoned it? I think. No, I'm going to show oh, you. Okay. I'll show they have you an on agenda. that. They had an agenda. Yeah. Because remember, at the same time, they were calling me a wife beater and all of mm. those things. And then I put out the video showing what that same woman that had painted in a black eye those pictures weren't made at the police station or at the hospital she took those pictures herself and she was was blackmailing me for years because i used to i had um when we met <laughs> and i was studying to be a jehovah's witness i was trying to do all those things so we you weren't having any sex or any of that stuff. So we got engaged and I bring her to um, my home in Philly. And I had this tape because I, anytime I had interactions with somebody, I'd heard that, um, that, uh, that Louis, Louis Armstrong recorded everything around him. You know, it's the same thing with uh, Marlon Brando. I recorded all these, all his interactions with people. So I was recording things. And if I'd had phone sex with some girl, I was recording that. If we were having sex, I recorded that because I wanted to make sure there was proof of, you know, if anything happened. Right. But I also recorded my mother the last two weeks before she died. And I had that on a dictaphone. And I didn't play with computers at the time. And um, she was like, oh, uh, why you got this on, on the dictaphone? I can put it into the computer. I was like, oh, great. And we could keep it forever. Wonderful. You're so wonderful. I go downstairs. I'm cooking some greens. Two hours later, I come upstairs. All of my dictaphones from the last 15 years, she has downloaded into her computer. And then she's like, I was like, no, no, those are my private things. I don't, like, oh, no, it's okay. I can just hit delete. And so I was like, okay, great. And then three months later when I tried to break up with her because we had no sexual, you know, there was no chemistry, chemistry sexually. She was like, you think I erased those things? I kept those. And I know what you've done. And, and she started with the blackmail. And all I really wanted back was my mother's tape. You know, where she told me, I know you're going to be okay, Terry. I always knew you were going to be okay. I just wanted my mother's voice back. I paid her whatever money she wanted. She destroyed that. She destroyed my name. But like I said, I thought that was a death blow. But that's what took me back when I had nothing. That's what took me back to this. And that greater being started showing up again. And you think if that had not happened, you probably would have gone further and further oh my down God. the world of acting and you my, would have abandoned this. Oh, my goodness. I had, you know, I was doing Iron Man. Yeah. Out of nowhere, you know, that gets taken away. We did a three-picture deal with, with Marvel, a three-picture deal, four and a half million for the first one, um, seven and a half to eight million for the second one, 12 million for the third. We signed it. They come back to me the week that my mother dies, and, my, my, and they called my agent, um, Charles King, over at, he was at William Morris at the time, and they said, um, yeah, we want Terrence, but we, we, we want to 
come back for a million dollars instead of the eight million that we had agreed to. And my agent had an emotional reaction to a business <laughs> decision, and he said, F you, and hung up the phone. Well, immediately they go to Don Cheeto. Oh. And, but instead of just doing that, they had to spin, oh, he was terrible on set and uh, all of, of these course. things and went through all this stuff. And I'm calling Robert Downey Jr. I'm calling him because when I was doing The Brave One with, um, with uh, Jodie Foster, um, Susan Downey was a producer with Joe Silver. Um, she comes over to my, 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 my trailer and she's like, wow, it's so amazing. Um, congratulations on Iron Man. It's the first time they've hired um, the second lead before they've hired the first. But Robert wants to go in there. And they were talking about Clive Davis and all of that. And I was like, okay, great. You know, I'm just moving along doing my thing. And he's, she's like, but Robert really wants to go in, but they won't see him. And I was like, I was like, I love Robert. I love what he does. I loved him in in, in Weird Science. I loved him. Who in, did they want? They, they want wanted Robert. Clive Davis to play oh, to Tony play Stark. him because remember, in the series, War Machine was supposed to take over. Right. And I'm like, well, if Robert wants to come in, so I called Avi Arad immediately. He was the producer on it, and I'm like, Avi. Um, I hear Robert wants to come in, but you guys won't even let him audition. He's like, no, we can't bond him. I'm like, instead of the four and a half you want to give me, why don't you take a million dollars for the bond for him if he get, if, 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 and, and let him audition, you know? And so he gets the part. Robert is like, I love you. Thank you so much. Da, 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 da. Well, when this other thing happened, I'm calling Robert and he's doing Sherlock Holmes. I called him 27 times. And I'm like, and then leave a message. I'm calling his, his assistant. I'm like, I need the help I gave you. I didn't hear from him until three years later. I bumped into him at Brian Grazier's wedding. Mm. And then, but at that time, I'd had um, Empire or whatever, and I came back. And he was like, oh, but everything worked out for you. Mm. And, you know, I'm, that, that broke me a little bit. But I know how hard Robert had it. Coming out of jail. Coming out of that jail. 